Yo, what's up guys? It's uh Zephroff here. It's not too late, it's 10.33. Um, and I actually gotta go make some food. So I'm a little hungry. Now I gotta have some snack. At Nature Box. Don't worry, this isn't a Nature Box unboxing video. But yeah, I gotta have it. It's really good. I might do something for it. Some type of sponsor for it, I don't know. Not right now though. Um, <laughs> but maybe I'm being a little too quiet. <clears throat> Anyways. What I wanted to tell, talk to you guys about is um, pre-ordering and all that and paid mods. Um, I'm going to get through with paid mods really fast, that discussion, just because uh, opinions have been said about it all the time. I don't understand why anybody got mad about it other than one reason, and it was when people were stealing each other's mods. Um, that's not cool, of course. And um, I guess I could understand because it wasn't really fair. It was a 75-25 split. 25 for us modders <laughs> so that wasn't really fair it should have at least at least been a 50 50 if not you know what steam does which is 30 35 percent but bethesda wanted some as well oh well it's their game they supported the mod tools it's a little expensive though um but yeah i don't understand why so many people got mad about it it was our option um i wasn't going to do a paid mod ever or at all but still, you know, it should be an option out there. Um, people are like, oh, but if people really like the modders, they're going to donate. Well, yeah, but it's it's really hard for artists, like extremely hard. 90% of artists do not make enough money without pushing that you need to buy their prints. But there's a 10% of them that just gets donations completely from them just making art on the internet. And gaming's a little, I mean, modding's a little bit better, and it's an 80-20% split. Um, so, you know, that's it's a little bit better, but still 80% of us have to push for it. And in a modding community, it's really hard to have somebody pay for your mod. <laughs> so 80% of people are missing out on being able to have enough money to buy things that they need. I should keep it up here. I don't know why. Whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah. What else was I going to say? Oh yeah, um, pre-ordering. Um, pre-ordering I don't agree with to some extent. It's kind of hard what, what my beliefs in pre-ordering are since I've had them forever and they've always been exciting for me. Um, I do believe in collector's editions if you really are a fan of the franchise. And I believe in pre-ordering if it gives you stuff cheaper or things sooner. So if you get DLC for free, not... Uh, yeah, sooner, but anybody else can get it. That's perfectly fine. Um, and if you get it sooner, that's perfectly fine because you're also buying the game sooner without being able to try it. And if you get it cheaper, which I believe almost all games should do, buy like five, ten dollars, whatever, maybe not have to pay tax. I know mean, you have to pay tax, but you know, they like take that amount off of their main price. Um, that would be really cool because we're getting it cheaper for buying a game that may be really shitty. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like, um, buying into a beta testing, you know, like I agree with founders packs. Um, so if I ever do a Kickstarter pre-order for my game, it'll be either to, uh, kind of like get up the game, get my equipment for the game, or it will be giving you guys it for cheaper or like a literal crap ton of stuff. Um, or things sooner, you know, all the things I said, I don't mind about pre-ordering, but other things about pre-ordering like pre-order exclusives, which are usually never exclusive, but still, I don't really agree with that. Um, cause it's just going to be a DLC that you're going to have to buy later just to kind of keep up or like a costume. That's not really cool. And I hate how you have to pay full price without knowing how good the game is. Like if it comes with a beta or alpha, that is the best. Like what Gears of War 3 did. I think you actually had to buy or pre-order Bulletstorm 3 or, oh no, no. Yeah. You could also pre-order Gears of War 3 and you'd get the beta. It was really cool. I got to see how good the game was and help develop it. You know, in in a sense, <laughs> I'm sure they took some notes from everybody matches, but still, you know, it it was really cool. Um, but I I, I love Kickstarter because it started up a bunch of cool campaigns, but I also hate it. Um, I also really, what I hate more than Kickstarter is I look a little tired. I guess it is getting kind of late, but um, I what I hate even more than that early access. I didn't have an early access game that was really good other than Minecraft. Maybe Subnautica. It was pretty good. Pretty unique. And technically the Daisy mod, but the standalone sucks. So 
<laughs> you know, it's not really a win-win. H1Z1 was actually pretty good for its early access. Um, it's actually been getting worse. So, you know, Minecraft's always been good straight on through. Um, I actually, I don't know if you guys have ever felt this feeling, but I got it with two games. It was um, uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Like, I remember being stupid at that game, and I don't know why, but it, it'd be so cool to forget everything about that game, go back to it, and have to relearn everything, because it was just fun learning this stuff. Same thing with Minecraft, because it was like, oh, if I do this with the redstone, now I have a trap. You know, I'd have to search on the internet. I don't know, let's look over here. You got it over there. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, sometimes I do, but then again, I also like knowing how to build things in Minecraft and all that. Like, I know how to do the uh, doorbell, and I know how to do a bunch of traps all in my head. It's my cheek, not my head. <laughs> but um, that's a little hollow. Hold on. Try and do it. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. But yeah, no. Uh, just early access. It, I hate it so much because I don't think I do like indie games a lot, but I hate when they stop doing it or it takes them a long time. People are like, "Oh, I really like that they keep coming out with stuff for five years later." And I would really like a game that goes on forever, just like World of Warcraft, instead of it only be fucking World of Warcraft. But still, with that being said, it's your first game. You're not going to make it on the best engine. You're not going to have all your expenses. You're just experience. You know, you're experimenting yourself. So that shouldn't be your main game that you're working on for five years. You should probably work on some other games. That's why I'm going to make your co-op game. It's not going to be a big old MMO or big old server side thing or anything like that. I like Diablo. And I'm going to work on it for like a year or two. And the same thing with my mods and all that. You you should really work on a bunch of different games. You should try to work up. Like, there's a shit ton of indie companies now. And they've all made one game. And they've been out for like 5-10 years. It's kind of ridiculous. And also the bad thing with them updating that game so much. And them prompting that game so much up there. It's like when we play their other games. We're like, wow, these are really shitty. Because they're so used to slowly dolling out updates instead of finishing and polishing a game themselves so that's why i really don't agree with it now personally you know i'm not trying to be a cocky little asshole here but i am going to finish the game i know what i'm doing you know but a lot of younger people or people that are in it for the money aren't and i can't blame them a lot of people are in it for the money you know um but i'm not of course money's cool but i got my first you know hundred dollar check from youtube and I spend seventy, eighty dollars of it on going back into YouTube. I got my new mic. I also spent it on something I can use in game development. I spent it on a new game for us to all kind of play together, um, and for me to make YouTube uh, videos about. And the other twenty dollars I spent on a Mother's Day gift. So <laughs> you know. <clears throat> And also all of my donations that I've gotten through my games. I've spent some of them on food because I, you know, I like to eat. <laughs> um, and it's not that I need it. You know, I'm young. My parents still pay for me and all that. I'm 16. Um, and I do want to get a job, but whatever. Screw that. <laughs> I'm going to get one, but you know, we're not going to go on that conversation right now. Um, but, you know, so, you know, I got that. But it went into me getting Axis Game Factory. It also went into me getting a bunch of different software for it. Because I really like seeing my games. They're a little bit more boring because I do know everything that's going to happen. But I know that they're going to lead up to something important that you guys are going to enjoy. That I'm going to get to see feedback from. And once I start getting co-op and multiplayer games, then I also get to verse you guys. And I won't even have to cheat. It'll just be something fun that we can all do together. Like I should be able to have a guild in my own game and it not be just always the most popular and overpowered because I'm an admin. We can just have fun. I don't have to cheat. You know? I do know the ins and outs of the game, but even game developers don't see some of the exploits that you guys do. Some of them are a little overpowered, but some exploits are actually really cool, like gold farming and World of Warcraft. But, you know, um, this has been one of my longest vlogs ever. Thank you for watching. You guys know my opinion. I do want to know your guys' opinion about it. Go ahead and let me know in the description since I am an aspiring game developer, and I will see you guys later.